everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm with Tony Miller and we're gonna be talking about the effects that COVID has had on landlords, uh, specifically small landlords and how it's affected our business and what we can do moving forward uh, to really protect ourselves from, from the pandemic and what's been going on. I'm so excited that Tony's here to share his knowledge on this topic. Before we get into it with Tony, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for both Tony and myself. And without further ado, let's get into it. Tony, great to have you here, my friend. Uh, why don't you give us a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as a a real estate investor. Sure. Hey, Darren. Hey, man. Great to be here. Good to see you again. Hey, eh? it's been a while. <laughs> it Jeez. has been a while. Okay. And uh, great to see you though virtually. It's fantastic. Sure. So my background is uh, I started investing back in 2008 and multifamily res, uh, some townhomes, that type of thing. And uh, lately though, in terms of investment strategies, um, I should add though that we did a lot of conversions. We did a lot of secondary dwelling units here in Ottawa for for ourselves and for our clients. And uh, I think done close by the time I passed the baton on to Natalie, like we were talking a bit off air, uh, probably got close to about 38 of them. And uh, which, was, which was really cool and exciting to see people build wealth, helping them do that, man. You know, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I guess we, uh, I just started getting to the point where I, I wasn't having fun investing anymore, like actually buying property you know, joint ventures and all that stuff. So, and it was really the property management aspect, you know, the landlording, the business of landlording piece that really started to, to, to wear on me. So now I'm just doing a uh, private money lending, you know, here and there. And I'm, I'm really happy doing that and lending out money to the people who I know and I'm comfortable with and do the due diligence and it, it's great. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a, a pretty natural progression that a lot of us are are looking to make, which is, you know, build our wealth in real estate investing and then kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, cash out and just private lend because, you know, once you get on that other side of it and you really realize, you know, I can make 10 or 12% and do nothing. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty sweet ride. It is. It is. So you get to a certain point in your life, right? And, and it's just uh, the right timing and everything. So very fortunate to be in that position to do so. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, hey, let's, let's dive in and talk about, um, yeah. you know, the effects of, of COVID. And I know this is a topic that is on a lot of landlords minds. Uh, you know, I get that question all the time is, you know, how have you, how, how have things been during COVID? Um, how have you been dealing with it as a landlord? And I'd love to get your perspective on just the things that you've been hearing and, and what's going on in the marketplace and, and what you're seeing. To summarize the way small landlords feel in particular, uh, tired, you know, they're, they're a little bit fed up where before, you know, landlords are very, you know, kind of quiet. They don't want to make a fuss and that type of thing. But now I think they're just tired and they're tired for a variety of reasons. Uh, you have COVID, uh, you have the, the, the eviction bans, you have the rent freezes, you have a whole bunch of other regulations at the provincial and, and municipal level. You have uh, tenants who, 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 you know, through no fault of their own, can't pay rent. And, you know, we don't want to see them evicted. Then you have tenants who, you know, they're, act, they're, they're intentionally not paying rent, even though they have the financial capacity to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we take all those factors into, into play. Uh, it, it's, it, it's been tough. You know, there are added expenses and, and not a lot of ways to increase uh, you know, force appreciation up through renovations, that type of thing. Granted, though, uh, you know, the, the market markets have done well. So, you know, the values through the through the market have, have increased property values. So so that's good. But it doesn't mean that everybody's making money through the yin yang because mm -hmm. of that. Right. You don't know what everybody's personal position is or, or financial status is. So. Uh, you know, you have to be careful with that. But overall, people are, the you know, small landlords are a little bit tired. And that's why uh, last year we started the Ottawa Small Landlord Association. And uh, it's been going well. What are you seeing right now, you know, um, in terms of, you mentioned the freeze on evictions. Um, you know, there's, there's no rent increases this year. How is that affecting the small landlords? Well, I, I think the, the eviction ban is, is the big, the big issue. The LTB, look, like, let me go take a step back. The landlord tenant board itself, because of the, if you try to um, 
if you need a hearing at the LTB and you and you deliver your your notices and you file an application with the landlord tenant board today, you're looking at eight months before you actually get a hearing, and that's that's pretty wild, right? If if I'm renting to Darren and you know Darren doesn't pay rent and I need to evict him or at least try to collect that money back, well, I'm going to be waiting eight months. So how are small landlords supposed to be able to to survive eight months, you know, by paying money out of their own pocket to sustain that? Okay, and it, it's pretty difficult. So there's there's that aspect of the LTV. Um, the system is definitely broken. Uh, the eviction ban has has been tough as well, um, because not only is the, the the delay at the LTB before the COVID hit, and now that COVID hit, you had the first eviction ban. Now you got the second eviction ban. At least this eviction ban, they're 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 still doing hearings. So the hearings are building. So we can expect in the next two three weeks a month. We're going to hear a lot from tenant groups and they're going to be screaming about all of the evictions that are happening when in fact it's just been a buildup right of all the mm. all the hearings and people who are being evicted and we have to remember that tenants get evicted for different reasons it's not not just for rent arrears okay it, you know they could be for property damage it could be for illegal activities it could be for harassment it could be for domestic abuse so it's you know there's the landlords need to have that that uh, that carrot dangling, right? The bill to, you know, just the, just knowing, tenants just knowing that they could be evicted is sometimes enough to get them to move forward and make payments and to stop whatever activity that, that we don't like them doing, they'll stop, right? Mm -hmm. So having that carrot to be able to evict them is not there. So that's that's really been difficult. The, you know, the, the rent freeze, <clears throat> that's, I sort of, when we were talking beforehand, I mentioned all the regulations that are happening at the provincial level. And in Ottawa, city of Ottawa, since COVID started, we're at seven new rental housing regulations that are being studied or have been approved. Seven. That's like, I'm just shaking my head. We have a homeless and housing crisis. So what does the city say? Hey, let's just, you know, add more regulations to the people who provide housing. Right, and let's discourage them to for building new stuff. Uh, the, the number of, of regulations that are coming in have been really difficult. So that's, I was talking about the the uh, the rent freeze. So it's not just one particular bylaw or or rule that usually hurts, you know, landlords. Yeah, it does a single mm -hmm. one. But when you take all of them together, when I just mentioned the seven from the city of Ottawa, the province. Uh, you know, and they have the, the eviction ban and all that stuff. And plus, small landlords have not received, residential landlords have not received any money, financial support from the government. We've been forced to house people, even people who deserve to be evicted, without any financial assistance. How do you think that we as landlords can can start to change the perception? Because you you know, you're right in the way that uh, most people they hear landlord and they hear rich person. Um, and that's that's not necessarily the case. I can probably find two thousand landlords in the city of Toronto right now that are not making a mon in money at all. In fact, they're losing money hand over fist. So how is it that that we can change that perception? I think it's by you know, it's, it's, we can't project, we can't be out there saying, hey, woe is us, woe is landlords, you know, look at us landlords, you know, have pity on us. That can't be the angle that we take because people don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so, I wouldn't want to hear it if I was that. It's positioning it and, and telling them that, wait a second, we're, we're small landlords or the group that we're in as small landlords and we want to help um, we want balanced and fair regulations and it helps tenants. So it's not just about, you know, landlords changing what, how people perceive landlords, but, you know, we're helping tenants. So I guess one, one answer is, yeah, we're, we're in it to, to help people become better landlords and, and that will help tenants at the end. Um, I think getting involved with, with the city, you know, from the municipality perspective, at least our organization is, is helpful because word is getting around okay small landlords and and you know around city hall and, and and the elected officials here they're hearing it more so that's good as long as they're getting the right message 
And the challenge with it is that they're bombarded by the other side, ACORN and, you know, uh, Alliance and Homelessness about, you know, the, the opposite. And so it's really difficult to counter. I, I think if, if you take a, a page out of elected officials' playbooks, if you keep repeating things long enough, the same message long enough, eventually people will come to believe it. And I, I'm a believer that, again, you know, 80, 85% of landlords out there are good people, you know, and sometimes they're, they might not know the rules enough to, and they make poor decision as a rule, but they're, they're good. They're trying to do well. And uh, so if we, if, if we just put out that message consistently, I, I think eventually some people will, will, uh, will, will change their minds. The second part is, you know, is the media. The media loves to vilify landlords in general. Uh, it, it's crazy. It, boy, oh boy, uh, it, it's hard. I, I'd say maybe you know one in ten articles about tenant landlords is, is really tenant slanted, and so it, it's it's difficult to get in there. I was on CBC Radio all in the day doing an interview, probably the worst interview I've ever done. Oh my gosh, Darren, please. <laughs> Don't listen to it. Whatever you guys do, don't go, <laughs> don't go listen for it. It's awful. Um, but at least it was an opportunity to get in there and just explain what we're, here's what we're experiencing. And we're not asking, we're not asking for anything outrageous. We're just saying, hey, we're uh, it's small landlords. We have different risk tolerance levels. We have different financial capacities and we buy different properties. We don't own 70, 80, 120 unit buildings. Right? Mm. Single family homes, maybe with suites, a town home, a condo apartment, maybe a few multifamily residential, you know, that type of thing, a few doors. So, you know, elected officials, media, uh, those are probably the two primary points. But I'll be honest, it, it's really, it's a tough hill to climb. It's going to be yeah. a tough hill to conquer. And Tony, what can, what can landlords do right now in your perspective to really, um, to try to combat some of these things, like I, I know, not necessarily the perception. I'm talking about what what can landlords do on a day to day basis right now to yeah. to balance that taking care of their tenants, or I like to call them my customers, but also keeping their bottom line healthy. Yeah, uh, good question. So we've been telling our our advising um, members to one of the first things that we that we started doing back when the pandemic hit. And when the LTV was closed and, you know, everything was, well, we don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to go on. We're just flying by the seat of our pants. And so the, one of the first things you said, well, listen, take stock of what you have. So do an, an analysis of your portfolio. You know, if you have mm -hmm. 20 doors, great. If you have five doors, great. But run through there and figure out, okay, what's going on? Which ones are performing well? Which ones aren't? And, you know, work on the ones that aren't performing well, because those are the higher risk ones and, and try to lower expenses. And, you know, it was difficult to raise uh, income, you know, in, in mm -hmm. certain times like that, but uh, just review and, and make sure that the portfolio is running well and take care of the ones that are, uh, aren't doing so well. Number two, you mentioned your, your clients, uh, the tenants, take care of the tenants. If you have multifamily residential right now, well, there are public health guidelines and city rules, provincial rules. You know, you have to have signage up. So please go ahead, put signage up. If you own a, a building that has an elevator, well, you gotta have signage up on how many people are allowed inside the, the, the elevator. Make sure that you're cleaning the property. Yeah, it's an added expense for sure, but make sure that there's sufficient cleaning being done to, to limit the transmission of COVID. Mask, everyone has to wear a mask. Hand sanitizer at the entrance sort of thing. And, and, and reminding tenants that if they, uh, and communicating with the tenants, if they're having any type of financial difficulty for whatever reason, and being able to pay rent or utilities or whatever, reach out, communicate you got to maintain that communication as a landlord with your tenants. And if they have issues, you know, point them to the right programs before it was served. And if they're having problems like in Ottawa today, if tenants are having issues paying rent, well, there's the uh, rent, sup rent supplement program. 
think it's called, I forget the name off the top of my head. And there's a second program as well that also assists with the rears with utilities. So there, there's no reason why, at the end of the day, why anybody should not be able to pay rent or be evicted, you know, because they can't make payments. And we don't want, you know, good tenants to be evicted. So mm -hmm. it's having that communication with tenants is extremely important. Um, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, I think, you know, communication in my experience is key, right? And I think that yeah. um, when the pandemic first started, it was the first thing that I did. Um, I wrote an email to all my tenants, um, not, as, not as the property manager, because I know some people will say, well, you never break that barrier between property manager and owner and all. And I was like, no, no, no. I am the owner of these buildings and I'm reaching out to you to tell you that if you need anything, let yeah. us know, right? Yeah. Um, we understand that you may be in financial hardship. Here are some resources that you can find to help you. And make no mistake, as much as I um, value you as a person and as a customer and all those things, um, I'm still running a business. And if you choose not to pay your rent now, um, that will be not a rent forgiveness. It will be a rent deferral, right? right? And I think just setting those expectations um, Tony, since March of this year, I had one tenant pay their rent 15 days late. Uh, that's it. Everything Fantastic. else has been on time. Yeah. Um, not to say that I'm immune to any of, of what's going on, but I think it does start with that relationship that you rec you create with things like reciprocity, uh, doing things for your tenants. They will in turn take care, good care of your properties. And then just being, having that human element and then being in communication with them is really helpful. Did you have to enter into any, uh, well, I guess you didn't, but uh, the, the other thing I was gonna mention, I just, I slipped my mind when I was looking through my papers is uh, you can use repayment plans as well, right? The, the landlord tenant board repayment plans, uh, ask the tenants if they're agreeable to it and negotiate through that, okay? And, and especially with the good tenants, you wanna have that, you know, just help them. You know, you have to work through. Uh, if you, and the thing to remember is that if you don't as a landlord, you know, work through and, and offer assistance through repayment schedule and do everything you possibly can to help that tenant. And then you end up at the landlord tenant board in a hearing trying to evict them. If you don't do enough, the board's going to say, forget it. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. And that's actually one of the lines under Bill 184 that's now in the RTA that, you know, they have to show, landlords have to show they've done enough. Yeah. Interesting. I had no idea that that was that existed. So I think that's yeah. a great piece of advice. Tony, thanks so much for your time today. Um, I know that you're very versed in this in this sector. Um, I'm going to leave your information in the description below and and your and your contact information for the Ottawa uh, landlords group. I'm sure you're going to get many people that are interested in in finding out more. Sure. Um, uh, if you guys enjoyed this session with Tony, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave uh, questions for both Tony and myself. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, Tony, thanks so much for, for joining me today. I really, it was nice to connect with you, my friend. It's been far too long. Yeah, uh, hopefully, this, this pandemic will lift at some point and we can actually be in the same room again together. And we presented on many stages together, and you're always a great guy to have around both personally and professionally. So thanks for oh, taking thanks, some your day to join me. Thanks, man. I look forward to eating some more Philly Philly chicken with you. <laughs> Best chicken in Ottawa. <laughs> Talk to you soon, my friend. All right, man. Take care. Thanks.